What is Murabaha? Murabaha is a sale agreement known as a Murabaha occurs when the seller steals the buyer at a profit. Murabaha, to put it simply, is a cost plus profit sale. It is necessary for the seller to disclose to the buyer in a Murabaha transaction both the cost of buying the asset and any additional profit he makes. Next is the application of Murabaha. An asset is bought by the customer as the buyer from the Islamic financial institution. The selling price, the of the asset includes both the acquisition cost and the profit margin. The buyer agrees to pay the selling price in full now or in installments over time in exchange. Murabaha contracts often make term financing, working capital financing and personal borrowing available. In a conventional loan, the lender provides the borrower with the capital required to finance the purchase of the asset. After that, the loan's interest is calculated. It's just a loan or arrangement for a loan. In contrast, a Murabaha transaction involves a buying and selling exchange between the borrower and the financer. Here, the asset is sold to the client by the financer at a higher price, for example, with a great open cost and profit. This arrangement will avoid the need for either party to complete a revoc transaction, which is a requirement of a conventional loan. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nur El Shabazi Bitti Mawfazan. Now I would like to explain more about the current issues on the Murabaha under Ibrab. The case of Bank Muhammadan Menteri Berhad was the Stantel Construction Sedan Berhad extensively deliberated in status involving Ibrab. In this legal scenario, the plaintiff acknowledged an oversight regarding the consideration of Ibrab in the claim amount. Consequently, this lapse result in the denial of defendants' entitlements under the facility agreement. Specifically outlined in the section 3.14 of the facility agreement, the provision of Ibrab is present. Section 3.14 AS specifically stated the bank shall grant Ibra in the case of early settlement of the facility to the customer. Within this legal discourse, the presiding judge expressed reservation regarding the interpretation of this clause. The judge questioned whether it pertains to terminated facility or exclusively applies to early settlement for performing accounts. Emphasizing the premature cancellation of the facility is in either case, the judge stated, in my opinion, a rebate ought to be given in principle, otherwise the bank would be unjustly enraged. Furthermore, the judge underscored the absence of clear express provision in clause 3.14 indicating the IBRA would not apply in the terminated facility due to default. The ongoing discourse surrounding early payment rebates in Malaysia has been subject of enduring debates. Scholars predominantly argue against the inclusion of a rebate condition in agreements where borrowers seek to the settle debt early in exchange for a rebate. Instead, they propose the rebates should be left to the decretion of lender, emphasizing a voluntary approach. Contrary to this perspective, Malaysia has adopted a different stance placing emphasis on public interest or maslaha. The Sharia Adversary Council supports the inclusion of a rebate clause to mitigate uncertainty and ambiguity, ultimately safeguarding the public interest. Notably, in practice, the rebates often apply exclusively to early settlements and not in the aftermath of a default event. To ensure transparency, equity and sustained confidence in the Islamic banking system, it is imperative to comprehensively elucidate, elucidate the IBRA clause. This clarification should align with guidance issued by the Central Bank Bank Negara Malaysia. The court re reinforced the notion of granting debates even in cases of default, endorsing a holistic approach that aims to facilitate justice in the realm of Islamic finance. This commitment to justice underscores the importance of aligning legal and financial practices with principles that prioritize fairness and cl clarity for all parties involved. The research proposes an alternative approach for banks to mitigate the causes incurred in the events of customer default adjusting the IBRA formula. Let's move to current issue of Murabaha in Ta'wid. Ta'wid has been charged by Maybank Islamic for a defaulted facility that has granted to M10 builders. This concerns a Murabaha overdraft facility value at 3 ringgit million, which underwent restructuring to become a 5 ringgit million MOD. The legality of adhering to the Murabaha principles under the MOD and the possibility of using the same assets for multiple Islamic transactions are two of the concerns. The judge of the High Court has explicitly stated that by enough contracts applies in the place of the Murabaha principles which were not followed. The bank terminated the facility and demanded payment for the outstanding amount due as a result of the default. Since the contract was not rendered void, 
or unenforceable due to non-compliance with the Murabaha principles, the IFI is granted that way in this instance. IFI is to entitle to reimbursement for the time that its clients took to make their payments. The defendant contends that the guidelines issued by BNM did not support the calculation of Tawid. Nevertheless, the judge expressed satisfaction with the testimony of the statement of account maker, who provided a detailed calculation back, back by section of 73A1 of the Evidence Act 1950. In this case, the judge finds the claim satisfactory because it is supported by a true calculation that was provided. The only distinction is that although the contract was nullified at the time of the claim due to the IFI's disregard for Murabaha principles, it is still enforceable under Section 74 of the Contract Act 1950, allowing it to pursue claims related to Taqwit. It is clear that claims based on Islamic principles could be handled under the common law which also helps me. However, since Section 74 was applied in this instance and the claim for direct and forestable damage is compliant with Islamic law, there is no legislative conflict. In conclusion, Murabaha is becoming a growing concern for Islamic banks because additional charges cannot be applied after they dictate. Many banks feel that defaulters should be blacklisted and barred from receiving future loan from any Islamic bank as a means of reducing Murabaha default. This arrangement is permitted in Sharia even if it is not clearly stated in the loan agreement. If a, if a debtor is experiencing true difficulty and is unable to repay a loan on time, relief may be granted as mentioned in the Quran. However, in circumstances of willful default, the government may take action. Defaults under Murabaha Agreement have become a concern for Islamic law enterprises and there is no clear consequences on how to deal with them. That's all from me. Thank you.